Hello, divine, beautiful souls. Hello, everybody. It's Katriel and Lisa. Hi again. Happy Sunday. Wow, this is really cool to see your own face. I'm sorry. I just had to do that. <laughs> this never happens when I do a podcast. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So today, um, we have a really cool topic. It's about empaths. And um, I'm going to be giving a piece based off the Zodiac. And um, Lisa has lots of words of wisdom in this area. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, the higher power. Um, but before we start, let's bring in the angels and do a little um, like prayer type of thing. Yeah. You know, set an intention. Set an intention. Do you want me to, or do yeah, you want to? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and set the intention this week? That's beautiful. Okay. So, um, universe, you know, whatever your higher power is, um, we we just ask uh, that this is, this time, the sacred space that we're creating here, um, uplifts souls. You know, all of our souls, and the angels are with us. Um, and we're hearing exactly what we need to be hearing and paying attention to exactly what we need to be paying attention to. Uh, and I thank you all, you know, thank you all for being here. You know, Hashem, uh, that's what I call my higher power. Um, you know, thank you. Gratitude is just everything. It is. It is grateful for this mm. beautiful space of mm. of joy, of laughter, of a, a sacred space for all of you to come to, to learn more about your beautiful journey and feel like you fit in somewhere because you do. Um, and today with the empath topic, I think this will, will help you all out quite a bit. Yeah, totally. Since we kind of just referenced um, higher power, we might as well start there. <laughs> Certainly. So often I will um, refer to my higher power or the universe as Hashem. And um, so I come from a Jewish background. Um, and so uh, like many times you'll hear um, the word Hashem and it means the name, the name. And why, why do we not say a different name of, of God, essentially? Um, well, it's a, it's a sign of respect, essentially, that, um, you know, we reserve specific names um, for prayer, specifically just the conversation between ourself and Hashem. Whoever your higher power is, exactly. it might be creator, it might be Hashem, it might be Buddha, whatever that is. That's what's great about this space is we respect everybody um, and, and where they honor their higher power. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would love if you guys, um, if you have a specific name, um, you know, that you'd like to use, you can totally put it in the chat. You know, I would love to hear all the different variations because we're all one, essentially. <laughs> we, we, are, we are we are all one, De definitely. Yeah. So, um, what about you? Know, you? Well, yeah. I mean, for me, um, I refer uh, to I refer often to my higher power as Creator um, because um, for me, with my practice, uh, I'm in service every day mm. uh, to people, to how I can lift someone, if I can touch one person, just like this podcast, if we touch one person, wow, you know, we've made a difference. So for me, it's, it's creator. It's, that's my higher power. I'm also Jewish, but my, 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 spirituality has expanded as I've gotten older and it's it's much more broad now mm. so you know while I don't go to synagogue the nature nature is my is my synagogue for me this is mm. where um, I can honor myself and be with creator um, in, in nature cool I love that you know it's interesting mm. um in in the Hebrew um uh, we'll often change one letter 
so that we can say um, the name, mm -hmm. um, other than Hashem, I mean. <laughs> but we would say Elohim with like a K, mm -hmm. and that literally means creator. Mm -hmm. And so I, the, so I really connect to that that particular aspect of of um, higher power. Yeah. The other one I love is Source. Mm -hmm. Because it's so expansive, but it's like you go straight to the source, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but, but the idea here is, is that there's, you know, there's a higher power yeah. now. And, and whatever yours is, we respect that in this space. Absolutely. And, you know, you can call on that source, your creator, whatever that looks like for you when you're going through a hard time. And certainly the pandemic has challenged many, many people on this planet. And so we've had to dig a lot deeper mm -hmm. to see, look inward and see, you know, where are we supposed to be? How are we supposed to show up now and call on our higher power? for guidance on that. And, and, I, and I mentioned this last week in the podcast that ask, there's nothing wrong with asking, ask, mm -hmm. ask for guidance, ask for help yeah. because they'll, they'll deliver. They will deliver and just come from your beautiful heart space and they will deliver. Absolutely. If you don't ask, you shall not receive. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I also want to just take a moment because our podcast is brand new and, and take a moment to introduce ourselves. Yeah. Uh, my name is Lisa Bronfield. My practice is Take Five Meditations. I'm an energy healer, psychic medium, and spiritual mentor. And uh, Catriel and I just kind of organically met each other. And um, <laughs> this is just another avenue um, for me and him to get our beautiful energy out into the planets. So um, I feel so humbled and so honored to be part of this weekly podcast. Mm -hmm. I love that. Ooh, Ooh, wow. Tell you. us a little bit thank about you. you. I'm so blessed to be here and to do this partnership with you. Um, I'm Katriel. <laughs> um, so what do I do? I, I do a lot of different things. Um, so I have a website, it's called Energy Speaks um by Catriel. um and on there i present it through the eyes of the chakras because um whatever i do in you know like for a job or connecting with one another whatever that is i i want to do it in a holistic way and and praising my creator mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so you know there's many many hats I wear because I'm connecting with each part of myself and each part of my creator. So I do astrology. Um, I, uh, I help people to really connect in that way. Soul portraits. Soul portrait is like um, I use my art and I channel like this message um, that is like part of your soul mission. And it, it's very expensive, you know. I, I do podcasts, I, <laughs> and, and more so on the, um, uh, you know, some other trades that I do is like helping people organize um, their homes and and doing yard work. And but when I do that, I don't just do that. I'm doing energy work with that. That we're collect or like. Both my, my client and myself are setting intentions on how to shift the energy of whatever's going on and setting that sacred space and transforming it. I love that. I love that, Catriel, because, you know, we think about every day, how can we have an impact on this planet? Well, it can be as simple as walking down the street and somebody that you smile at and you might say hello yeah. and you lift their day yeah. because you have to remember we're all energy, right? We're all one. So, you know, when you think about, well, gee, I'm not doing the kind of work that Lisa and Catriel are doing. It doesn't matter. You know, I always tell people it's all about the people that cross your path every single day. 
And that small difference you can make in their life by holding a door, by smiling at them, maybe helping them with their groceries to their car, those little things, that's an energy shift. And that's the way we raise the vibration yeah. of the planet. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting because it's like we could be literally mowing lawns for a living doing office work, whatever that is, farming, as long as it is bringing us closer to our creator and and fine-tuning that relationship, that inner speak, you know, Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. what really counts. You know, you could be, you could literally be looking at a potato, whatever. (laughs) I don't know, like, you know, (laughs) chopping a potato. I don't know. Like, it doesn't matter what we're necessarily doing it's the intention Mm -hmm. you know it's guiding those actions you know and that's why i you know i i always recommend to my clients set set intentions in the morning whoops that's okay we just will fall down there Uh, (laughs) uh, set intentions in the morning um before you you know while you're having your coffee what are you going to set for your intentions for the day right and um and how you're going to show up for yourself. You know, when you give in the littlest of ways, that exchange of energy is going to come back to you so in, in so many different ways. And it's such an easy way to lift yourself yeah. um, when you can give in, in just the smallest of ways. And I love, okay, so you're talking gratitude here. Yes. And I love that mm-hmm. because okay, if we're all energy and how we move around is all energy, right? So with energy, whatever the um, more dominant energy is, whether that be a negative or a positive, that's what it's going to be. So if we're taking that gratitude, gratitude is filled with so much positive, strengthening energy. It's so dominant. Because even if someone's having the worst day in the world, if someone sees a smile, mm-hmm. it can transform. Absolutely. And so it's is as simple as that. If we can guide ourselves to those dominant energies being positive, you know, just even for an hour, we break it down into an hour, right? Then it 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 transforms the planet. It does. It really does. Yeah, it really does. I mean, uh, gratitude, when you set up a gratitude practice every single day, you're going to expand everything in your life. My grandmother lived to 103, and one of the practices that I have every single day is thank you, creator, for the food on my table. Mm. Thank you for my health and thank you for the roof over my head. Thank you for mentioning food. Okay. So I, this, okay. So food is energy, right? So what we're taking in is also super important. Mm -hmm. Taking it in, in any way, shape or form, it could be music, Mm -hmm. you know, what we're listening to. Um, All of those different things play a role. And also, um, you know, we all have certain sensitivities, right? Mm -hmm. Bringing it into the empath, right? Mm -hmm. And um, with that, you know, um, it's, it's kind of showing with those sensitivities, like, what we really should be taking because food is energy. So how you nourish and love yourself is is every bit of food and and water and beverage that you take into into your body. Yeah. Um so you know I, I know a lot of single people like to eat out. Okay, if you're not a cook, I get it. 
But the idea is there's some healthy options out there. Yeah. So be really mindful of what you're putting in your body. I mean, we all know sugar is really inflammatory. So you just want, there's, there's this happy balance that you want to have, but in nourishing your food and listen to what your body needs. Yeah. Because like sometimes a creator will say, I want you to get some root vegetables into your diet, more roots. So that would be beets and potatoes and carrots. Mm -hmm. And I'll get those into my diet. And certainly it does make me feel better. Yeah. And when we're putting that, like you said, the those intentions into the food, for instance, you know, that, that gratitude of it being there, it just amplifies that energy. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, I... I don't know how many times it amplifies it, but I will tell you, imagine if it was even three times the amount. Mm -hmm. Imagine what that translates to. Right. And additionally, since uh, we're on this topic, when you're eating, are you doing mindful eating? Mm. So are you sitting on your devices and eating or watching TV? Hey, maybe, you know, like in the old days when I was growing up in the 60s, everything got shut down and it was family time and nobody had a phone or a computer in front of them or the TV on. We simply took time to really relish in the meal. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really, I know that's very important because when you are more mindfully eating, you're going to fill yourself up more. If you're eating really quick and you're, you're, you're distracted and whatnot, you're not going to get as full. So, you know, again, there's frequency and there's energy yeah. to the food. So think about how you sit down at your meals and what you're doing um, when you're eating. So it's funny you mentioned that. Okay. So um, I'm very mindful when I eat and what I'm taking in because during that time, the, the vibrations that are around me, I'm consuming. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do actually watch some, some TV during that. But <coughs> there, there used to be a thing that my mom and I would always do. We'd always go and at that time... Um, I would go to William Sub. I can't eat a sub anymore like that. But <coughs> I will tell you that that specific thing lit up our heart when when we ate that sub and we turned on a specific television program mm -hmm. because and we did not we did not eat the food until we had everything ready and in place and it was because we were sharing a specific you know, energy together mm -hmm. and taking in that energy because it was so sacred. Okay. It's something that her mom um, and her did, you know, their entire life. And so, you know, there's different ways and to, to take in energy. And it doesn't mean you have to cut out some things. It's what really lights up your heart because that's what we're talking about here. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. Understand, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. You know, there's certain things that families have as traditions yeah. or, or routines. You know, um, I think today compared to when I grew up in the 60s and now with all the cell phones and all the texting and all that, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Honestly, I would prefer to sit down at the table with my family, and, you know, and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But that just wasn't our like mm -hmm. what what we did like. Because we didn't sit at a dinner table. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I kind of had to, like, frame things mm -hmm. for, you know, in my family's comfortability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's ways to, to really be mindful with things when you're only working with, you know, because you're working with other people sometimes. Or maybe you're alone. Yeah. And, and sometimes you don't want to sit in quiet. Yeah, I love this Sometimes because what you're, what, you're, <laughs> what you're seeing here is like an energy, it is, it's a generational difference. Yeah. I was born in the 60s, you know, and yeah. so it, there, we did sit down at the table. Yeah. Now it's different. So, you know, how do you create a different vibration? depending on the generation, depending on the situation. How can you change the vibration in that situation yeah. to make it literally nourishing yeah. for everybody there? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It's like I, there's things that we prefer. Like my dream would be sitting down with my, my friends and, and 
and family, um, those who I've adopted to as family, mm-hmm. and having like a Shabbat meal. Like that right there is so nourishing to me because right after we pick up our instruments and, and everything. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, Shabbat only comes once a week, you know, what's going on in the other side, you know, the other days and stuff. And sometimes it's not always what we want, Mm -hmm. but we have to, you know, navigate through that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We all have busy lives. (laughs) You know, gosh knows, you know, we're going and going. So, you know, it's creating those, those moments. Yeah. And it is, it only takes that moment to create a nourishing moment for us where we can change the vibration where instead of feeling like we're rushing through something, yeah. we're more mindful yep. about what we're doing and how we're moving through that. So I'll, I'll give you another example since yeah. we're on this topic. House cleaning can be really meditative. You know, so you take an activity that you think, oh my God, I got to clean the house or I got to do the lawn work or whatever. But when you look at it differently and you say, I'm going to take this moment to embrace it as a time that's a quiet time for me to clean my space and change the energy in the space or clean the yard and and embrace the moment rather than dreading the moment. So again, this circles back to what we were talking about earlier, which is gratitude. So how do you embrace gratitude in that moment to change how you're looking at an activity That might not be something you'd be doing. You'd rather be on the beach than mowing the lawn. However, you know, it has to be done, right? (laughs) But, you know, you just take that moment to how you can connect with yourself and and Mother Earth as you're doing the lawn or, you know, um, just being able to have that quiet space when you're cleaning the house, maybe putting some fun music on and, and you know, it's, it's how you change, how you look at it and how you work through it and how you create gratitude yeah. in each and every moment of your life. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I spoke about some of my services and stuff like that. And you're talking about mowing lawn and stuff. Yeah. You know, just think about for like, you know, yard work. Right. So when you're mowing the lawn, you're you're like cutting things, you're cutting things back. And you can literally set intentions. This is the way my mind works of like, okay, this, you know, like I don't want these negative certain things in my life, you know, any, anymore. Like I want to shift something. I want to change it. So let's like cut it. Mm -hmm. And I'm setting certain things, you know, and then like, say I get to the part of the yard where I'm actually like, um, you know, raking and gathering all that energy and shifting it. And then I need to plant something. Now I'm planting the seeds. I have the sacred space that I just cleared out, right? And I'm placing these specific intentions. And it doesn't have to always be like, this is what it is. It can literally be a energy flowing through you that you're just kind of observing your thoughts and observing what's going on while you're doing these things. That's what I've noticed to happen because I have a very active mind and that's a, a, a really huge form of meditation for myself to slow down because I'm actually doing something. So the brain is actually quieting. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, really it's taking any activity and, and, and it's transforming it. Yeah. So how can you transform different activities in your life? When we bring joy, when we bring gratitude, you expand everything in your life. So look at the different things, be it going to work, you know, the nine to five thing or, you know, whatever you're doing in your life. And how do you transform how you look at that activity, how you feel in that activity? Mm. Um, because if you're going to work and you're you're considering it like, oh, man, I've got to go to work. I'm not happy. Well, you've got to do one or two things. You either got to go find another job that's going to make your heart sing or you're going to have to transform how you engage in that job every single day. And so you've got some choices. And when you make some choices that are for your highest and best interest, watch the miracles appear in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) to the empaths. All right. Are you an empath? Well, 
let's take a look at some of the common things that show up when you're an empath, okay? So signs that you are an empath are you have a lot of empathy. People tell you all of their problems. <laughs> OMG. How many times do if you'll just sit there, you might not even know the person and they tell you all of their problems. That's a big one. Um, you take comfort in nature. You find you need to recharge when you've been really around a lot of people and this and that. You find you need to recharge. You don't do well in crowded places. Mm -hmm. um, you have a hard time not caring. So, you know, you, you're trying to detach yourself from maybe a situation that might be toxic and you have a hard time pulling yourself out of that because you care so much. Um, you have a high sensitivity to sounds, smells, and sensations. Uh, that's, a, that's a big one. So those are just some of the signs of being an empath. I think, you know, when you're, when you're getting drained, when you've been in crowds or been around a lot of people and you get this drain feeling, it may not simply be the fact that you're being drained. It might be that you've been around some people energetically that have taken from you. And so now you've got to recharge. So the idea is now you've got to figure out how do you recharge? What recharges your batteries? Yeah. And I think this is a really perfect time to, um, okay. So what I, what I, I have to do when I feel that, like it's very present of like, I feel so drained. Mm -hmm. I used to be like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Now my go-to is, okay, something of mine of like, that's part of my essence is out there in the world. And I have something of theirs. Okay. Let's how, how do we clear that? Mm -hmm. Do And you can use any form of words or energetic like, tension and just, type of thing but i like to do um you know uh, calling back all of my essence in full to be cleansed cleared released renewed and only of true essence be integrated back into my being with grace and ease at speed of light and speed of sound processing as above and so and so it is that's the first step and then second sending back all essence that's not of my own true essence mm -hmm. to be cleansed cleared released and renewed and sent back to its source with grace and ease at speed of light and speed of sound processing as above and so below. And so it is at that point in time, I feel some type of shift within myself. And again, that can look different to every single person, but it's the intention of like, you're literally taking back what's yours for your energy field and sending back what's theirs. Yeah, my, my teacher, my first teacher used to have me say, and I say this before I leave the house every single day, um, and, uh, and, and basically it's this. Um, I, first of all, put gold light, white light around my body and vision myself being really protected. And I say, what is not mine, send back blessed and transformed. What is mine, bless and transform and integrate with ease and grace. Mm -hmm. So it's the same idea. We yeah. both have the same idea. You know, then if I get into a situation where, you know, I, I've, I've gotten into some energy and it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So this is where the crystals come in. I carry crystals on me because I, I never know when I'm walking down the street if I am going to do a reading for someone and whatnot. And selenite is, mm. is a fantastic cleanser. You can cleanse your aura simply by going over your head and going down your body with it. You can get the polished kind. This is just a regular, a regular piece. But, you know, selenite is a great way to cleanse yourself. Certainly sage, um, a spray, or actually smudging yourself. Epsom salt baths, um, and or simply getting in the shower just mm -hmm. to cleanse and ask creator, ask your higher power, ask Hashem to clear your energy, wash it down the drain, and, and, and so it is. So there's different kind of things you can do for yourself to make yourself feel better. Yeah. And, you know, this, this kind of goes into discernment. So we'll, we'll kind of digress here for, for a second. Who's in your circle? Mm. Who's in your tribe right now? Who are you spending time with that lifts you? Who are you spending time with that when you leave them, you're just, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling drained, and you feel like the energy is taking from you. 
you know, it's hard to walk away from friends. And yet I've seen with my clients um, and myself personally that there have been some friendships, you know, we've had to walk away from because the energies are changing so much with the pandemic. And we're all stepping into what truly what we're on this planet for, that we have to be really, really mindful of who we are surrounding ourselves with. Now, that doesn't mean judgment. It's simply doing what's good for you and and what's going to nourish you and surrounding yourself with nourishing people like nourishing food. Absolutely. I I remember, you know, like a verse in Proverbs of literally it's that, you know, who you are around is the energy that mirrors back to you, you know, and it's just like. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the, that's something that's coming up. I, I was guided to look, look up some regards to um, different types of empaths. Ah. There is um, one that I learned about uh, probably 2018. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is me. <laughs> and it's called the Hayoka empath. Ooh. The Hayoka empath is actually a um, sacred clown essentially. And what it does is it takes, um, like it it might, okay. So have you ever seen that weird kind of person? And I'm saying myself here, so (laughs) where like, they just like get all like squirrely. And, um, when they're around like certain situations and that, that are heavier, maybe, And they may start laughing or mirroring back some of the energy that is right in front of them. That is part of the sacred clown. What they're doing is transforming the energy. And I'm going to read a little something about it. And you can definitely go look on YouTube. Then we're on. Yeah, we got that. (laughs) And look up the Hayoka empath. It says, traditional signs that you are a Hayoka include being born breach, being uh, dyslexic, being emotionally unpredictable, doing things backwards, doing things, um, oh, sorry, being left, being left-handed and thinking differently, uh, differently uh, than others. Now, like, that's just some of the signs, but it's this, like, very, you know, interesting, unique type of um, energy that's literally there transforming. And I don't know, I, like, I love studying this stuff. It's, it's, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I, I am as well. <laughs> I love that. Um, but uh, do we want to go into the Zodiac? Yeah, yeah I think we do. Uh, you know, what, what we wanted to talk about was first, what are empaths, different yeah. types of empaths, and then how it relates to the Zodiac and where Katriel is an astrologer navigated with the stars actually uh we're gonna have uh, he's gonna go over this for us right now so this is literally different empath um skills based off of you know the zodiac energies so there are different type of empaths uh this definitely falls underneath that but um i want to say we all have every single zodiac energy within us and when we look at our chart um, you know, we, we can kind of see where these certain skills are highlighted. So I like to kind of go with four different signs, um, to kind of look at my primaries essentially, except primaries three, but you know, four, whatever, (laughs) (laughs) but it's our, my, okay. So I look at my sun sign, which would be Scorpio, my rising or ascendant, um, which is Sagittarius, um, my moon, which is cancer and my earth sign, because we're here on the earth (laughs) and that is Taurus. So I'm going to go through, um, kind of like in the way of, uh, the houses, um, starting with Aries and I'm going to read. So I don't know if I can show this. Eh, It doesn't really, it doesn't show up too well. We we will, we will post it. (laughs) We'll definitely post it. So Aries has uh, the empath skill called the fauna empath, the force of spring, naturally stepping into the energy of inspired action. 
So it can kind of like tune in to the energies around them, but based off like this kind of like awakening sensation of like, I need to do something. I'm supposed to do something. And, and, and taking forth with that. Okay. And, and again, empath is also reading the signs here. You know, it doesn't always have to be like this, like, uh, we have these beautiful gifts within them. And when we figure out what we have, what's dominant in our energies, we can bring this whole world to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have, um, let's see here, Taurus. Taurus in Pascal is physical, um, receptive in that. Uh, it can mirror the emotions of others into their physical body from all around them. Can connect with others in the aesthetic realm, uh, in the aesthetic realm, and identify their specific energetic imprint. So this is so interesting. So again, this is my earth sign, right? With this one, imagine you can actually feel certain people's like actual like um like things that are going on like okay so on the negative side of things you can feel their illnesses right well that's where you're you're putting up your your own energy barriers to not necessarily feel other people like that okay just because it is a thing doesn't mean you have to do that but i will say you can use this as a healing gift right here because if you know and you're feeling someone in that way tuning in and even maybe asking them specifically or asking their higher self to see if you can help transform that energy. You can do that. I love that. You know, I have uh, some people, I do a psychic mediumship practice group and I've had uh, two or three people in my group that are medical intuitives and they didn't know it. And so um, when I was, when I do an exercise to pull mediumship in and uh, the other night, for example, we pulled a father in from one of the participants. Mm. And one of the people in my group got heart pain. And sure enough, the, the sitter, the person receiving the information, confirmed that her father died of a heart attack. So I will bet that he has some Taurian energy. You know, he probably has a sign in Taurus, um, either with his sun is rising or his moon, mm. and, and being able to feel this information. So I think that's maybe a good analogy. Yeah. And, you know, it's so interesting just because we have a physical, tangible thing, which is definitely Taurus that we're working with here. Um, in that situation, you could still send love mm -hmm. to that, um, to the guy that passed over, mm -hmm. the father that passed over, mm -hmm. because time is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. We have so many different timelines going on. You can still heal that piece. Mm -hmm. And, and so sending love in that way, like, why not? Mm -hmm. But, you know, and in, in my yeah. groups too, it's true. You can send love. For me, as an evidence-based medium, yeah. this was a way for us to confirm it was the father coming in and then to get the message from the father to the daughter who was the sitter. So boom, right? right. So it's, it's really beautiful that as empaths that are in my groups, because every single person in my group is an empath, they can feel things. They talk about how the collective energy, when it's getting really, really kind of crazy, that they pick up on it. Yeah. Um, and so that's why as, as we work through these signs and understanding where your sign falls and how you are going to interact differently with these different energies and, and how you can clear yourself and, and create a better space for yourself as well. Yeah. And um, the other aspect of Taurus um okay so this is a really cool i thought this was like a really cool gift when i realized that i had this going on is i'll feel someone's energy like on my my back sometimes sometimes it'll be here it depends on the person i've literally started playing a game with the universe kind of of like hmm who is trying to contact me right now or you know who's thinking about me and every single time i've tuned in the person that I was feeling that I thought it might be them, they were trying to reach out to me. 
I love that. And so like it, it, it was it's like a prickly feeling that I feel. And it goes like for me with certain people, a lot of times it's right here, um, right behind the heart. And and so like, you know, you can ask yourself questions, ask, you know, source questions and like getting deeper on like, why is this happening? You know, what's going on? When you ask questions, you get answers. <laughs> you do. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're experiencing too, and um, I've gotten it, I've been getting it lately. If spirit comes in, you'll sometimes feel somebody like they're touching your face or the back of your neck when spirit comes in, um, or you might feel a tap on the shoulder, but sometimes you're going to feel like a light, light touches on your body. Mm. Don't let it scare you. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's obviously, you know, we all, all have energy. angels and guardian angels around us or family members that are, yeah. are, that are with us. And so, yeah, just, you know, ask the question, gee, who's, who's trying to communicate with me right now? Sit in that quiet space and try to figure out who might be trying to touch base with you and connect with you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so don't, don't let that scare you and think that, oh my God, I've got a ghost in my house <laughs> or, or something like that. I mean, uh, this, this, is, this is a different, a different feeling that gets reported and certainly you can uh, read up on the, those types of, uh, those types of experiences. Yeah, totally. Well, since we're talking about communication, mm. Gemini. Ah. Gemini's empath skill is the telepathic empath. Ah. Um, they are extremely, and I say energy, not, you know, it, like whatever it is in our chart, is extremely sensitive individual who can attune to the communications all around, such as other people's thoughts. So reading people's thoughts and stuff, that's definitely a major thing with the Gemini energy. And, you know, where you can really look even deeper. Like, again, we don't have to just look at those specific, um, you know, four planets. We can also look at Mercury. Mercury is the communicator. Like, it's the head of Gemini. So, you know, we can see how, um, you know, that unfolds, you know? Wonderful. That's cool. And then let's see here. Cancer. Okay. So I have a Cancer moon. I get this one. <laughs> this one is called the chameleon empath or pure empath it can mirror any emotion around them has the opportunity to cultivate deep caring within their being because they fe can feel so much it's the water sign isn't it cancer okay so that kind of makes sense it's a water sign so you're just gonna be feeling it all it, you know whenever we get to like a um, degree point 22, like in, in the astrology, that day is the most potent day of feeling. No joke. Just, I mean, if, if, you know, if you're, if you're someone who studies astrology or are just curious, look on that day and, and just, and it can be anything. It could be really, really positive or it could, you know, be, but you'll feel everything to a T. And in that specific one, you're there to shift the energy, shift it to a new frequency. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they, like, the, the cancer energy is very, very potent with feeling. And especially in regards to caring, like it is said, you know? Um, so when we care about one another, we can feel them. We're, we're talking about lineages here. We can tap into the energies of our past lives, our, our past lineages. We can go into that. that. That's all part of this cancer empath skill. What I like about as we're talking about the different signs, you guys, is that, you know, I, I tell people who come to my psychic mediums or practice groups, everybody has the has the ability to be intuitive to be mm -hmm. psychic everybody can tap into it so um as you look at these at when katriel posts them this could really give you an idea of where your your strength and your gifts may lay um, I'm, I'm enjoying this this is this makes so much sense so it really may help you understand gee maybe i'm supposed to be a medical intuitive 
Um, maybe um, you know, it's 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 a guide for you mm. certainly to to look at. So this is this is just lovely. <laughs> Thank you. So Leo, Leo, that's me. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell? Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> So the Leo empath skill is psychometric empath, which can feel the emotions of someone who has touched something they then touch. So you can literally, you know, um, like say you picked up an old artifact. Psychometry. Yes, psychometry. Mm -hmm. You can tune into that and the ancientness of all the energies isn't that interesting and I'm, I'm bringing that to my group some of the people have been asking hey can you can you bring psychometry in um because there's more interest in psychometry so mm. for example bringing an old piece of jewelry from a family member that has crossed over and you hand it to each person in the group you everybody has a pad and paper and they write down what they are getting from that energy very yeah. interesting yeah it's that that's one of my favorites like i love it because <laughs> it's like yeah, like <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, then we got Virgo. I love Virgos. This is so good. Okay. So Virgo's empath skill is the flora empath. It can affect or be affected by um flowers, plants, and trees around them. Also can talk to plants and tune into their frequency for healing purposes can have a strong um, connection with the with the fae energy, hmm. okay? And fae being fairies. Ah. So, um, okay, like the Virgo energy, those who are really in tune with their Virgo-ness, um, okay, if you're feeling overwhelmed, first of all, go hug a tree. Absolutely. For real, mm -hmm. because it will transform something for you. Go sleep outside, like go get a tent and get out for a little bit. Um, do meditations in nature and also be willing to receive these communications from this plant life. It's life. It's, it, you have that special connection with this particular life and how to help heal people in whatever way that looks, whether that's physically or some other way. Mm -hmm. I love that, that's great. So that might be, that might resonate to some of you that um, are, are interested in plant medicine and helping heal people through plants, um, which, you know, thank goodness we still have some left and uh, people, uh, you know, um, it's a great resource. If you don't want to use conventional medicine, yeah. at, you can help a lot of people uh, with the plant medicine side for sure. Oh, and please do a garden. Do a garden and see what what's, what magic comes out of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. And let's see here. Libra. So Libra um, in Pascal is um, emotionally receptive can feel the emotions of other people and it can affect their judgment can also in can also tune into other people's or others emotions to highlight where balance is needed which is really interesting um so i have a friend um she's a libra and it made so much sense when i when i like really thought about her in this way and i was like oh wow you know, Libra energy is all about balance and um, they care so much. They care so much for the, those relationships around them. And, um, you know, whenever you need a perspective on life to help like find balance, talk to someone who's in tune with their Libra energy. Yeah. It, it's incredible. But I will tell you from the perspective of a Libra, um, you know, there's a lot of like back and forth energy, not necessarily totally like the Gemini, but more so weighing things out. And, you know, just be aware that if you are, you can't make a decision on something, maybe you need to go clear your mind and, and maybe, you know, find a way to restore balance 
balance within your world, whatever that is, before you make a particular decision. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> and Scorpio, yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, Scorpio is next. Wow. Uh, Scorpio is the medium empath. Oh. Can feel spirits, entities, and energies around them. Have the potential to go deep within realms and cultivate their energetic alchemy skills. Now, what I mean by that. Okay, so there's a lot going on. You got to remember, a Scorpio has layers to them. Okay, anybody who's in tune with their Scorpio energy, there's many different worlds going on and you can literally tune in to whatever layer is going on energetically. Okay, you can go into the physical world, you can go into all of that. You can also identify where portals are. Okay, that's something that came through. I can literally detect where a particular portal is. And when I tune in, I get information. What am I supposed to do with that? Am I supposed to close it? Am I supposed to let it be? Am I supposed to bless it? You know, there's so many different things, you know. Um, but it's it's very energetic. And yeah, like we can talk to the beyond. Doesn't mean we always should. <laughs> right. Use discretion, use discernment. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, my two cents on that, you know, um, as I do readings with people or uh, I'm working with students uh, and clients, it's very important as a psychic and medium that you always ask permission of the person receiving the information um, because you're going into a different boundary. So you do want to ask permission. Hey, I have a message from spirit um, as somebody who's crossed over um, uh, or I, I'm getting something that, you know, information for, for you. Can I share it with you? Are you open to me sharing it? And if they say yes, great. If they say no, great. But very, very important that um, as an empath, which means you have psychic abilities too, they're there, that you always ask permission. Thank you for that. That is something very, very, very important. And you know, boundaries is definitely part of the Scorpio energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sagittarius, I love this one too. Um, it is the enlightened empath. It can sense the truth inside others as well as identifying deep truths along their journey. It is literally the truth detector. Uh. <laughs> like you, you want to know if something's up? You know, what, like if, okay, if you have, of course you have Sagittarius in your chart somewhere, but if it's, if you've been cultivating that Sag energy, you have this gift of knowing if, if someone's talking to you and you feel something is off, follow it, see, ping, ping, uh -huh. you know, and follow your intuition. And also when you're on your journeys, and you're on a truth quest of maybe something like let's change the whole thing like say you're wanting to to discover something okay and you don't necessarily know what it is but it's kind of like you're sniffing kind of like a wolf right follow that lead follow that truth follow that lead and that that energy that's taking you towards that you know it, it's it's the higher it your higher guidance you don't, you know, like you may not know what the true answer is. You just got to follow the path. Exactly. So one commonality in all empaths, regardless of your sign, is that you are going to have a more sensitive intuition. You know, when you meet someone or you're in a situation and it doesn't feel quite right, mm -hmm. listen to it. Yep. Listen to it. You'll, you'll begin to learn that when you don't pay attention to it, it's going to be a lesson for you and that's okay i always say no mistakes there are lessons when you do pay attention to it now it's for your highest and best interest 
So no, yeah, you're going to feel stuff. You feel it in your belly. You'll feel it in your heart. You're going to feel it. Yep. Pay attention to it. That's why creating more mindfulness and awareness as a, as a meditation teacher and as someone who does healing through meditation in my practice, this is why meditation every single day for five, starting with five minutes wow. is really important. Yeah. Expand your practice into more time, but start with five minutes. Don't beat yourself up trying to do the 30 minutes. <laughs> but the idea is when we create more awareness, now our intuition, we're more sensitive to that intuition yeah. as we move through our journey and saying, gee, is this situation right for me? Should I partner with this person? Like when Katriel and I decided to, to partner, it spirit was very clear for us. This, <laughs> you know, this was just a no brainer. It <laughs> felt good. We could feel it in our hearts. We knew this would be good for us and be great for the collective. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. Mer. Yeah. <laughs> Mer. I'm learning the Mer thing, okay? It's a little out of my generation, but I'm learning. Um, then we have Capricorn. Capricorn's um, uh, skill is geomantic um, empath, which it can sense energies within places and is known as the feng shui detector and can also tune into the land and the foundations of the earth. So we're talking about sacred space and inside homes and different things like that. It's like, all right, let's say you're gonna go on a ghost hunt, right? Okay, <laughs> I love giving random weird situations. <laughs> all right, so you're gonna do like an energetic clearing. You can feel it, right? Cause you got that Sag there like saying i know i'm supposed to follow this let's bring the sage and the palo santo <laughs> <laughs> and, and the capricorn's like okay sure why not <laughs> you get to the house all right then the the capricorn goes into it all right we're ready oh hey we're supposed to do over there and over there and over there's some heaviness over there. We need to feng shui that we need to move this and that and all that. That's where <laughs> the Capricorn energy of impasse skill comes in. It can also really tune into the land. So when heavy things might have happened, like, like say you go to like a, a battle zone, you know, um, of like you know like an old civil war battleground it can it can really tune into that energy and that timeline and transform it because those who are really strong within their capricorn energy um they can also float into that cancer energy of the lineages you know um and so it can go on to that timeline and really shift it love it that's cool. Mer. <laughs> I like these random things. <laughs> that. That's cool. That's really cool. Then we got Aquarius. Aquarius is pretty freaking cool. It is called the Gaia Empath. It can connect to everything and everyone around them, including the Earth, and can naturally feel into how everything and everyone can come together as one. So it has this beautiful energy of bringing people together and also knowing what is highest and best for the collective. And, and that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, the humanitarian, of yeah. course. So yeah, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. And then we have Pisces, last but not least. Mm. It is the astral empath. And it can sense what is going on in different planes of existence and can feel something before someone knows what they are actually feeling, <laughs> as well as knowing things before they happen. Mm -hmm. So my, um, uh, one of my mentors, um, Olasa, like she was notorious for this. She's a Pisces. And I'm just like, it was just so like, she's all water, first of all. So, but like, she would always be in the stars and just be like, are you feeling this? And we're like, what the heck, what, what is going on? And then like, like say, okay, I've gotten a text message from her, had not looked at it yet. 
and ha- was not feeling it at that moment in time. But when I went to my text message and I had all, I had already started feeling the way I was feeling, I look at the text message of Salasa and she's saying, are you feeling this? I'm sending love. And I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> The Pisces energy is is pretty powerful. That's the, a very spiritual uh, yeah. sign, certainly. Absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, that's my that's my moon. So, ooh, um, yes, yes, that's a, that's a lovely one. Um, really great information, Catrio. I love this. I think it's very interesting. I've certain I learned something today. Um, you know, with that, and I think it'll be great if, when when you post it. I think people are going to really find it very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. So, you know, um, we talked about the impasse. I think, you know, one thing in common, you know, um, I think with the collective energy, uh, regardless of your sign or whatnot, and we kind of go back to this whole idea of grounding and hugging yeah. trees and earthing and getting your feet in, in the dirt. You know, when you're feeling that spinny kind of anxiety kind of energy, you got to ground yourself. Because now what happens is you might start making decisions that or knee jerk reactions or whatnot, and you got to just get yourself to settle. We all have those moments. And it really is as easy as going outside and putting your bare feet in the dirt or hugging a tree. Trees are great. Remember how deeply rooted trees are. Um, and taking that moment for yourself Absolutely. And, and, and nurturing yourself that way with some grounding activities. So, um, uh, it's it really feels good uh, getting into nature, particularly for all empaths, regardless of sign. Really, really, really will bring you back. It doesn't mean you have to go walking or hiking for miles. It can simply mean just going outside and sitting in your backyard silently and just taking in the energies and the quietness and the birds singing and watching butterflies and and whatever, and just taking in that beautiful, beautiful energy that Mother Earth has to offer us. Yes. Go roll in some dirt. (laughs) Hey, <laughs> absolutely and chase a butterfly <laughs> i had bu- baby bunnies show up in my yard yesterday oh my god like i just saw one bunny and then i was like why is it still there and i'm like mira that's so awesome and then another bunny popped out mm-hmm. and then their kids and i was like that's cool that's that fertility right and and that's the thing is like even going in and out in the nature and observing beautiful miracles like that, mm-hmm. like that helps ground you. <laughs> it does. It does. And to expand that topic. So he had some bunnies show up. I have ospreys show up. Look up animal totems. Yes. Animal to- spiritual animal totem. If you type that into your phone or into your computer, when you've come across maybe something unusual with an animal or an insect or something, look it up that's a lot of times the universe trying to share something with you telling you that you're on a certain path and to stay patient or whatever the sign might be i get owls showing up for me quite a bit so yeah take a look at the animal totems spiritual animal totems are really really fun so um keep that in mind too yeah i love that Coolio. Coolio. I hope you guys loved um, this uh, awesome live that we just did. And if you guys have any comments, you know, like of of, like topics you want to like discuss and and different things, um, let us know. Let us definitely, definitely let us know. We are here every Sunday, uh, 630 Eastern Standard Time. We'll probably be either on Instagram or Facebook Live next week. We're going to try to change it up a little bit um, and see um, so people, you know, it's easier access. YouTube isn't uh, maybe sometimes as accessible for some people, but we want to try some different venues to uh, get the word out and have some fun, bring some joy to people and some laughter and some really cool knowledge. Absolutely. All right. right. Well, (sighs) Love you all, divine, beautiful souls. Peace and love to all of you. Thank you so much for joining in. We love you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your Sunday.